So when we think of penguins, we think of cold, snow, and the South Pole. In fact, there are no penguins at the South Pole, and most penguins never venture to Antarctica. Of the four penguins that live in Antarctica, three of them, the Delhi, the Chinstrap, and the Gentoo, breed only during the Antarctic summer. Only the largest of the penguins, the emperor penguin, breeds during the extreme Antarctic winter and stays down on Antarctica through the winter. So we decided to set out on an adventure to see these largest and most remote of all the penguins. In order to get to the emperor penguin colony, we need to take a Russian icebreaker, the Kapitan Kalivnikov. Certainly part of the thrill of going to see the emperor penguins is the dramatic trip to the colony. We will have to cross the Drake Passage to get to Antarctica, then potentially break through miles of ice. This can be especially rough in a rounded hole icebreaker with no stabilizer. Although the ship is parked, we're still about 12 miles from the Emperor Colony. We will fly in the next 10 miles. From the landing point, we are carrying our gear the last two miles to the colony. We are walking over sea ice. That means that we are not walking over snow-covered land, but rather the sea with a layer of ice on top. Since the ice moves, cracks form, and we have to watch out that we don't fall through the ice. We have arrived at the colony, and it looks like there is an official greeter waiting for us. All this ice will be gone by summer, so the chicks must have their adult feathers by then. The emperor penguin is the largest of all the penguins. The emperor penguin can be up to 48 inches tall and weigh 80 pounds. Although they are birds, they have lost the ability to fly through the air, but they can fly through the water, diving to depths of 1,700 feet. The penguins arrive here in the fall. The female lays her eggs in early winter, then leaves to feed. The male incubates the egg in the front pouch above the feet through the very cold Antarctic winter. He then hatches and feeds the chick. By the time the female returns in three or four months, the male will have lost half his body weight. It is still the middle of winter, and the male must return to the sea to feed or die. It can be a journey of 100 miles back to the water at this time. No wonder the emperor penguin is so big to lose half his body weight and survive through the Antarctic winter. The penguins don't have fixed nesting sites, so when one of the penguins returns from feeding, they find each other by a unique call that they use to identify each other. It is now spring, and the early hatching chicks are getting pretty big. These little chicks that are on the feed are the ones that hatched later. They are going to have a tough time growing up enough to take to the sea when the ice into the colony melts. What an exciting opportunity this was to see the amazing Emperor Penguins. <laughs>